Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest we're excited to have is Brian Andrews, VP of IT at Stone Brewing Company. Uh, looking forward to this uh, interview all, all week. Um, love <laughs> IPA, love Stone, love your beer. Let's talk IT. Where's, <laughs> where's the props? I Welcome know. to theCUBE. I know, I wish I had beer in here. Gosh, <laughs> just water today. <laughs> so thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank uh, you. you guys obviously brew beer, so you know that's yeah. business. Yeah. You know, brick and mortar business, you ship beer, you truck yeah. it out, you distribute it, yeah. you manufacture it, IT's involved. Uh, yeah. Give us a quick overview of the business that you, you're involved in on the IT side, obviously the brewery yeah. uh, is the main business, the, but underneath that, the IT piece. Tell yeah. about that. And, and we'll get into some of the service now. Good. Stuff. Good. Uh, well, it's a uh, $100 billion market, the beer market. Craft is really taken off. We're growing uh, fast, 18% growth in craft uh, last year compared to the beer markets, just you know, barely hanging on it even. So we're, uh, we're really taking market share. It's a lot of fun. So we're the ninth largest craft brewery in the United States at Stone. Uh, four major parts of the business. We've got the, uh, the beer uh, brewing and uh, distributing that nationally. We have also our own distributing company. So uh, the national goes out through third-party trucks and uh, national distribution, third-party distributors. And we have our own for Southern California. We distribute our own beer. So 70 of our own trucks and a team distributing there. And that's where headquarters is? And that's where our headquarters is okay. in so Escondido, built out San Diego. Distribution around yeah, the region? in that area. Yeah, we were forced to do that really at the time uh, being a our 19th year now, going way back, we had to do that to get in the market. Uh, we have uh, some beautiful uh, bistros, just beautiful experiences to come enjoy uh, craft. That's another part of the business, so the restaurants and the bistros. Uh, our own farm, organic farm, it's part of that. And we have a retail business as well. We sell uh, great merchandise uh, online and in, in stores. Uh, six company stores. So there's a lot going on in the business. It's so you a, got a brand. Yeah. You got the retail. Yeah. You got the manufacturing. Yeah. Customer experience. Yeah. I mean, you've got an. This is yeah. a full on. This isn't just blocking and tackling. Right. Bottled beer, bottling right. beer, and sending it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, I think, a unique and complex model for. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of moving parts to the model. Yeah. That's so right. So, what are the big sort of challenges as the VP of IT? Yeah. I mean, what is what's the business that pulling you yeah. a lot of different directions? How yeah. is that evolving in the last few years? Yeah. Well, I joined a year and a half ago, and uh, you know, we have really. Um, decided to, to grow and invest and, and build this business. So we're going to be opening two more breweries, one in uh, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, we're excited about that one, and one in Berlin, Germany, and be the first uh, American craft beer company going anywhere in Europe. Wow. That's so great, we're, yeah. uh, we're, we're, we're territory, committed, that's right. They know their beer. <laughs> They're excited about it. be good to be in there. I know, I know, but uh, the <laughs> craft beer. movement's starting there, so <laughs> we're going to help, help out there. But uh, yeah, so we're going to, we decided to grow, and not all the companies are, are doing that, and, and we're unique in building two new locations yeah. at one time. So there's a lot going on. A lot of risks so, doing that, too, yeah. you could potentially. That's right, so we uh, have really been assembling uh, you know, the team to, to take us to the next level, and we have uh, committed to a, an enterprise IT strategy and have a centralized model where we just want to put in the key building blocks throughout the company uh, with IT that we can really put that scalable platform in place. So we're really about scalability and flexibility, being agile, uh, mobile friendly. You know, these were the kind of drivers that were coming out when I first started. And uh, you know, I joined, uh, started talking to the business folks right away. You know, what are your pain points and doing that uh, around all the groups. And it, we started to hear the same things. Uh, I need a system in brewery maintenance to take care of this equipment. Yeah. And we have downtime on the equipment. And we can't afford that because our production numbers are going way up. We have to have those machines running 24-7. So that was one thing that uh, was like the acute pain point. But they wanted forms to request maintenance. They wanted workflow, service level agreements, transparency, uh, dashboards and reporting analytics, those so kinds of things. what time frame right? was this? Take us to what year this is This was about a year and a half ago, okay. yeah, when I first started. 
So 19 years, they had yeah, some IT 19 years in legacy. the company, some IT legacy, but uh, yeah, really going to heavily now invest and really accelerate that curve. Did you have visibility yeah. on this before you came in or did it really just come into focus after you came in and started querying the business? Yeah, it was really when I joined, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's an inflection point. So we had, you know, what worked before to get us to a certain point was there and it was it was okay to get us to where we were, but to grow at the pace yeah. we now need to do. And we had already really started to buckle, I think. We, we should have been ahead a little more, but uh, you know, to really lift to this next level now, we needed this heavy investment in, in new, a new technology set of platforms, you know, key investments. And uh, again, I- So how did you do that? Yeah. And this is really yeah. awesome because yeah. it's really a great example of yeah. timing the wins at the right time. Yeah. Your yeah. business is exploding. Yeah. Craft as a market segment is great. Yeah. You got a lot of moving parts and growth. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you had a bolt in an IT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tug us through that. That's right. a great use case. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it's been so fun. So yeah, so this brewery maintenance, they really needed something. Now they had already started talking to plant maintenance vendors and mm -hmm. they were looking at certain applications. And when I came on, our COO, uh, Pat Tiernan's great. He said, hey, nothing gets uh, purchased without going through Brian and the IT. You want to make sure that they're involved. So that was great to have the executive support. Uh, but talking with those guys, they had a few favorites and they, they really got hooked on this one platform they wanted. So, okay, so I said, well, okay, hang on, let's, uh, I'm talking to more people, let's just hold off a little bit, give me a little time, I'm new. Uh, so I talked to the facilities uh, team and they, they said, hey, we need something for facilities that manages all our work orders and safety. They, uh, we have a really good safety program and they wanted a system because it was all email based and Excel, same thing, track our requests coming in and analytics and everything was manual, you know, so they wanted something. Media, they get tons of requests in, t-shirts, posters, uh, events, and all this comes in and they track it in a system that they were outgrowing. And of course in IT, I knew right away being on the BMC track it uh, system, which was really an older client server. We hadn't upgraded it. Yeah. We were limited on licenses. We can't even get in to really use it as much as we need. I knew we needed something too. But these other pain points were out there that were significant enough that I said, well, we all want the same thing. So we started talking to ServiceNow. We had a great team that came to uh, start working with us. We uh, got a partner with Entreus that helped us out as well, getting these business requirements. We uh, started to put some proof of concepts together and we were able to convince everybody that this platform could do it all for us. And we deflected all those other requested applications and and just went all in on ServiceNow. With basically a single platform. With a single platform. So take us through and, that, so yeah. that's the classic. I mean, sometimes yeah. in IT, it's like you pack the parachute, someone else might have packed it, you yeah. pull the ripcord, <laughs> it may not open, yeah. right? So, you know, yeah. I mean, but, right. but let's take you through that. So yeah. did you have a confidence level? I mean, obviously they gave you demos, they had yeah. a team there. What was that What was that decision point? I mean, yeah. the, you felt confident? Did they give, yeah. was there any kind of trial SE work or? Well, I came to knowledge last year. That was the first experience I had. And we had been looking at the product lightly uh, through the first quarter last year, 2014. Uh, we came here really, uh, really impressed with where the roadmap was going. And then it was really that second quarter after coming to knowledge that we were able to work with these different departments. They gave us the trust to, to give us some time and we built out some proof of concept. Um, uh, so now post alignment. decision, yeah. what yeah. happens? You have a meeting, everyone comes together, you have training, was there development involved? How did that, yeah. what happened next? Well, we, uh, we really just went for it in parallel with, uh, we, we put IT last, so that was, we needed something desperately, but I knew that if we focused on IT, we were going to miss our opportunity. So and what does that mean? Does that mean right? make the technology decision last, or does that mean the Roll needs off. of the technology department came yeah. after the needs of the business, or yeah. both? Say more both. Like I knew that this was where we we're going to go for IT. The decision was made. That was you know, service. Now is it? But instead of starting the project, we said let's just put that on hold and really start with brewing operations and maintenance. That was the number one driver. Facilities and safety came with that because there were some yeah. synergies. Uh, so those were the first groups we tackled. Oh, okay. so yeah. We, so that's basically yeah. you prioritize. That's the crown jewels of the business. Yeah. So you go there first, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened after that? Yeah, so uh, we, we got through uh, several months of that and got all the requests uh, working so that all the requests were coming into the system and started to fine tune that. So that was actually last year uh, going through, uh, see we signed our contract service now in June. 
started the project in late July. By October or so, we were getting requests into the system and uh, used that quarter four to, to fine tune reports and analytics. Um, we did start at that time then, we started media and IT as well. Media wanted project management and IT could get started too. So we started those in parallel and uh, got through that end of the year. This, uh, there's still some, some work we're doing. I mean, we're here in April now, but we're, you know, we're, we're pretty in pretty good shape here. Got through most of it. There's, so you're invested, yeah. are you happy? Very happy, yeah, we're thrilled. Yeah, thrilled with it. What are some of the proof points, kind of the before and after, kind of like, okay, we got service now. If we didn't have service now, this yeah. would happen. Can you give an example? Like, just well, some pain points, I mean. Yeah. Pain points and yeah. vitamins. I always say aspirin, vitamins, and steroids, yeah. and vaccines are like, yeah. kind of like, but we get a solution. So here you got an aspirin and yeah. vitamin. Yeah, yeah. What, what what examples can you give? Well, I mean, we certainly would have been in a place with three or four, maybe five different systems. So I knew I would have needed, if we would have gone that direction, much more software expense, hardware for some client server, which you know would have been bad, and um, and more IT staff and, and business staff to support. So we avoided all that extra cost, at least a quarter million, I think, in savings so far by not going that direction. Plus, um, by doing this, now we've got a COO dashboard. He can go in to each of his groups, all these groups I talked about report into him, and he can see, drill down to each department and see these real-time dashboards. So the data we're getting out of it's been great. Each of the department stakeholders has uh, you know, their status meetings. They can pull those real-time dashboards up, see all the, uh, the real-time management decision-making going on oh, on the fly. On the fly, yeah. Transparency it was, yeah. is big, you know, versus the black holes of requests coming through. So, right. yeah. Are you the yeah. de facto CIO, or is yeah. The, yeah, okay. Yeah, we have 15 people in IT, very lean. And you report to the COO. We report correct. to the COO. Yeah. yeah. But talk about the um, the. I want to. Well, I want to get your perspective on this. So yeah. everything is a service. Great yeah. marketing. Yeah. Got to give it to service now. Good marketing. That's, we believe that's going to be everything's a service. Amazon yeah. just launched machine learning as a service. I mean, yeah. Everything will be launched as a service. Yeah. So what's your view of that? Okay. I mean, that's marketing. It's cliche-ish, but you know, you know yeah. kind of a gimmick for marketing. But it does translate to this new API economy. Yeah. It talks about the things that are really going on: agile, DevOps. Yeah. How do you translate that those trending, you know, topics to reality, your world? Yeah. And what do you guys look at that roadmap as for your future? Yeah. Well, we're really starting with that concept of all the departments that are coming on are providing services for Stone so we can get this uh, amazing beer out to our fans, right? That's what it's all about. So in order to do that, we all have to be executing. We, we've got to eliminate the thrash. Lots of cross-team dependencies that happen, you know, big enterprise initiatives that require us to work together. But, um, but yeah, it's really just helping each other to get it done. There's so much reliance on each other. So. Yeah, each team. Are I, people I really, happy on the IT team? Oh, oh, sure, sure, very yeah. happy. I mean, we we're so committed to the business and care so deeply about what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, being close to that business and knowing that we're contributing just feels so good. And, and company, how many how many people in the company? Roughly? We're coming up on a thousand now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, 15 yeah. people in IT. Did, did you look at Express? Yeah. Uh, no. No. No, so we're going for it. Yeah. Although I suppose you're a candidate, but you, you need more yeah. than. So we were, yeah. Dave and I were yeah, talking folks. about this. We think you yeah. guys should be the official beer for the Cube. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Our, our yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering about that. <laughs> absolutely. This is the Cube brought to you by yeah. Stone. Oh, I like <laughs> it. Yes. All right, I love it. That sounds really yeah, like, good. Look All at right. the background. Stone. Okay, next year we're going to talk about that. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> That's the real ESPN of tech. Yeah. we got to have, a, uh, you know, Stone. Yeah. <laughs> I, we're uh, excited yeah. about this project management uh, concept, too. Uh, so we have, I mean, it's, there's so much going on, but we have these different silos happening. It's so hard to give service when you have the silos of information. So for a new beer to launch, and we did like 40 new beers last year, special wow. releases and collaborations, it's, that's a big project in itself yeah, yeah, and to that, get that That's out. a good point, brings up the dashboard piece, right? So you yeah. have the real-time dashboarding, and you got the data. If it's in a silo, it's going to have a lag. That's right. Real problem. So that's I got to right. ask you, that being said, yeah. external data, because you guys must move on yeah. things like trends at Coachella to yeah. all the you know cultural trends. Because if craft, if you see any blip in the radar, yeah. you got to yeah. react to it. Yeah. Maybe flavor. So how do you guys deal with the external data coming in? Yeah. How do well, you, we, how we're not there yet on ServiceNow, but I would love to, to get there. Uh, but there's a, there's a ton of information that we have to get about what's happening at our distributors and what have they purchased 
and we, we don't get to actually see what beer is going to what account because that goes through the distributor yeah. unless we get it from a third-party data aggregator. So we got to be able to feed that back in, which we do, and that's part of our ERP. But uh, but you get the data from the local because you have local distributors. You, that data and you do have. have, and that's ours because yeah. that yeah that's our. So we have that data, but the other 105 distributors out there, we have to rely. So on So you the third could envision yet, building yeah. on top of ServiceNow Absolutely. in terms of dealing with ext extensibility yes. around Absolutely. data coming from third party. Absolutely. Workflow, value chain. Yes. Supply chain. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah, for sure, and. Um, yeah, we're just we're not quite there yet. What's but, the secret uh, sauce in the beer? Can you share? Oh, I can't. <laughs> the love. I love. <laughs> the love. Yeah. There's a lot of passion about doing the water. Uh, quality. Yeah, I love. That's, it. that's a key part of it. I, I love yeah. beer. <laughs> <laughs> the developer community. It's t not time to value. It's time to beer. That's the that's the expression we hear. Oh, I like that. You know, that's really good. Time that's to really value. Good. That's a business term. No, no. Developer time to beer. And then Fred, Fred Luddy says no. Beer. People don't. They don't stop coding. I go, well, they'll yeah. drink beer while coding. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. It is really, it's all about the beer. We really stay focused on that. But, um, well, Brian, we yeah. really appreciate you coming Thank on. You. Any advice I'd like to you, get you to share with the group watching? Um, a lot of people are watching ServiceNow right now. Certainly yeah. the developer community now with the private instances really makes yeah. for a more robust and an extensibility is going to go through the roof. In my, yeah. in my opinion, I believe that yeah, me too. now that they have that, I think you're going to see a lot of point applications, this marketplace coming out of the store. I think you see a ton of innovation. So that's, share that's with the folks hear. out there, your experience, your vision, what it's mean to your business and you personally and your staff. Yeah, ServiceNow as a whole. Yeah, ServiceNow, yeah. the whole platform, the tech. The tech and, and, and yeah. under the hood. Uh, well, I'll just say, it, I mean, it really is a cornerstone platform for us to grow this business on. And um, we do feel like those building blocks that are in there make it quick for us to deliver value to the company, and that's been big for us. We were able just within a couple of months to get these groups on, and there's a lot more to do, but we're going with that agile continuous improvement model. Uh, you know, there's just so much common thread and so much power in these building blocks coming together that you can reuse, repurpose, get into a mobile interface, uh, and we love the idea of uh, bolting on new apps that we can build with, without having to have a big development team. We, we really don't have a development team on our 15-person you know, IT. We don't have QA. We don't have uh, you know real development group. So we need uh, to be able to have a few people deliver powerful solutions quickly, uh, mm -hmm. without having to get into serious coding and and testing and, and the like. So speed, speed to beer. I like that. Time to beer. I just uh, followed you guys on Twitter. Yeah. 191,000 cool. followers. Yeah. Uh, obviously, social media is big. We our will test out your ticketing big. system with our media quest for T-shirts and All right. event beer at our parties. And nice. Uh, <laughs> congratulations on your success. Thank you. Story. I mean, Thank I think it's much. a great example of you know this shift that we're in. People are retransforming yeah. and rearchitecting in real time, looking at these cost decisions, yeah. value, timing. Yeah. And it's really great use case. Thanks for sharing. John. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much, we, guys. We really right. appreciate it. All right. Brian Andrews, uh, VP of IT, CIO at Stone Brewing Company here inside the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break.